what I'm going to do in this video is cover how to make graphs of your adjusted marginal means or your adjusted conditional means in uh, Word or Excel. You can, yeah, they work together in this case. And really this applies to any time you want to make a chart that you can't do in SPSS that's a bar graph. Um, so for example, if you wanted to do a double repeated measures graph, line or bar graph, this would be a better way to do it. You can force SPSS into um, giving you a bunch of bars together, but it doesn't uh, cluster them like you would like. This is another way to do that. So um, <clears throat> how to make bar graphs with error bars in Excel. Okay. So the first thing you want to do um, in either version is to click on charts right? and then column graph. So we want to use columns. Um, we always call them bar graphs, but either way. Uh, and I want to do a clustered column graph because I have two variables. So don't do any of these 3D crazy things. So a cluster bar uh, column graph. It's going to open Excel for you. Let's give it a second. Okay. But it, it finally pops you up to this window. Okay, So it says this is a chart in, off in uh, Word. You could go straight to Excel and do charts and column graph. It looks exactly the same. Okay. So what you want to do is type in your data that you're interested in. So one thing to note is like right here, this is the part where you can um, expand or um, <clears throat> squish up your graph. So I'm actually going to take out series three. So anything that's in blue is going to be used. So that is the one little square, it's hard to see, where you can control how big this graph becomes. Okay. Excel opens two windows just for fun. There we go. All right, so I'm going to use the data from my ANCOVA example because ANCOVA is the one you really cannot do in SPSS very well. Okay, so I'm going to label my series, so employed, unemployed. And you'll notice that as I go through this, SPSS is auto-update. I'm sorry, uh, Office is auto-updating. Too many SPSS videos. I'm going to change my four categories. So I've made my two by four, and so now I have them stacked together. I could also reverse this graph, um, but that's easier to do in Word where you can click switch plot and it will switch which way you're doing it. So that you have control of in both windows. Okay. <clears throat> so let me enter the actual means. So seven. <clears throat> Okay, so those are my employed means. Let's enter our unemployed means. Okay. All right, I want you to have seen is that it's auto-updating over here. So those are the, the mean differences. Now something a little different <clears throat> is I am now over here in, a, in an area where it's not going to graph, going to enter the standard errors in the same pattern that I entered them here. So basically I'm going to make this graph again, but just for the standard errors. They don't need labels unless you're getting confused on what you're entering, but I've entered the standard errors that match this mean in the same spot. It doesn't matter where you put it, just don't put it in the blue section. Oops. Okay, so I'm entering these numbers now over here. So I have a chart of the means and now a chart of the standard errors over here, right? <clears throat> so what am I going to do with these standard errors? Well, I'm going to make them um, become my error bars. So to do that over here, I will double click on one of the series. So I'm going to do employed, that's in blue, so I'm going to double click on the employed um, column. What that's going to do is bring up a spot where I can format a lot of the different options. So I could format the axis, could format what order they go in, but really we want to use error bars. You can also change colors if you need it to be black and white here, but here under error bars. So pick both and then caps so that you get the little lines. Now at the moment it's giving you these crazy bars, look how nuts they are. And that's because it's set at a fixed value. Well I can't really do that because each column has a different one. So I can't do any of these options. Now it's very tempting to pick standard error, but what that does is it calculates the standard error across those four means, and that's not what I want. I want the standard error within each bar individually, which I have from SPSS. 
So we're actually going to click on custom and then click specify value. Now when you do this, nothing sort of happens uh, on my Mac. This little thing goes bonk and then Excel comes up. But once you click specified value, click back over to Excel and you'll get this custom error bar option. So under custom error bars, what I want to do is pick this little box. I'm going to click on it and highlight for the column set that I'm using the four standard errors. So I've got employed here. I'm going to select an unemployed because it's the blue one. And so I highlight the four employed standard errors. But you can't do um, just the top. I've got to also do the bottom half of the cap. Otherwise, they're going to be uneven. So let me show you how that looks. So once you click OK, it'll auto update over here. So see how tiny it is at the top here and how large it is at the bottom? I don't want that. So you can do both of these at once. I was just trying to show you what happens. So click Specify Value. We'll come over here. So click on this little box. It's not going to be auto selected. Highlight these four again so that you have the same numbers in both of them. And then hit OK. And then back to Word over here. It takes it a second to finish figuring it out. There they go. And then hit OK. Okay, now these are standard errors. So at some point, you're going to have to say, um, you know, for figure one, um, SPSS auto puts it on there. Oops, sorry, wrong button. But what I want to say is um, error bars denote standard error. Okay. So that is one standard error. Normally we're doing confidence intervals, but remember I said it doesn't matter as long as we tell people what they are. Okay. Let's do the second one. So double click on the red boxes. It's going to pop up and give me standard error or error bars because that's where it was a second ago. So click both and caps. Then we're down to custom and then specify value. Wake up. Come on. There it goes. Click over to Excel. Highlight the first set. Click on your little box here. Highlight the second set. Okay. Click on the box again and then hit OK. Go back over to Word. Give it a second to auto update. And then hit OK. So now I have the error bars. I'm like halfway there to having a good graph. But that's the hardest part is to add those in and make sure you get the top and the bottom. But now the problem is that I don't have any axes labels. Okay, so under chart layout here at the top, Okay, you can kind of do this here, but if you click on any of these quick chart layouts, it will erase your error bars. So don't do that because then you've wasted your time doing the error bars. But click chart layout. And then there's axes here. But there's also axes titles. So I want to use axes titles first. So I'm going to add, click horizontal axis, title below. And then axis, vertical axis, and most people do rotated titles. So now I have them both. I can click once on it, once again to get it, just like SPSS, and I can edit what it says. So this is religion. Okay. And then over here, this is attitudes towards the use of drugs. Okay. <clears throat> now, the only other thing that I always tell you to fix is the y-axis length. And so you can, I think, right click on it and do format axis. But if you don't want to remember that, it's under here under axes. It's the vertical or y axis and axis options. And it actually takes you right to it. So I want to make the minimum zero. And then we can leave the maximum at nine. So I would need to know the scale, but let's say it's zero to nine. I hit OK. So now you see. Once I, you know, stretch the scale out to what it actually is, is that they're not actually that different. So I don't want to exaggerate the differences between groups just because the graph starts at 7.2. The only other thing that I like to change, um, which is just sort of my personal preference, is I don't like this line around the graph. So I always click on Format. And then here under fill, I make it no fill so that the background is clear. And under line here, I make it no line. So there's no um, square around my graph. There are plenty of other things you can do to these graphs too. For instance, if you don't want the bars, um, you can move the 
move the um, legend around. You can add a legend title. You can actually type and change these. You can make the whole thing Times New Roman because Calibri is annoying. So you could, I think if you highlight the whole graph, can we get that to work? Nope. So to change the Times New Roman, you have to pick each piece separately. But I could make each one the right font. Because I think it looks a little silly to turn in an entire research paper in Times New Roman and then to make a graph and it be in Calibri. Kind of shows that you didn't, or Cambria, or whatever it is now. Kind of shows that you weren't paying attention to the details. Um, <clears throat> so that would be a really good graph that you could include. It's not too hard to make. The error bars are the slowest part. And so that's how you make graphs in Excel with error bars.